Hi guys, back again with me Dennis Wang and today I want to talk about Sonic Mini 4K uh, I've been tinkering with this machine for like uh, a month and at first when I bought the machine I do like the usual stuff, we do some calibration, exposure finding and leveling the bed and I managed to print these three model the result is quite good, the detail is very crisp so then I moved to print a bigger model this head sculpt and I start to notice some problem let me do a close up shot to this head sculpt and in this head sculpt I noticed I have some bending problem or wobble lines like this here you could see the line it is a regular line so I print another one which is taller and yes we have problem see this line here and over here you could see a bending line or wobble lines but beside from this uh, wobble line I know this printer also has a flex arm issue uh, I managed to reduce the flexing not get rid of the flexing but at least reduce it and also some popping uh, sound the loud popping when the when they are moving up and something like this your print suddenly disappear or fail horrendously but even if you buy a high-end printer you will also face a problem all you have to do is know how to troubleshoot the problem so I print this uh, torture print uh, to check the difference before and after I troubleshoot this printer. And this is the test from my other printer. You see, uh, the print is very stable. This is from Mini 4K. Before troubleshooting, Wait, focus. And this one here, after troubleshooting, you could see the huge difference. Also, for comparison, you could see this is the before. It's sorry. This is the before troubleshooting. We still have the wall line, and this is after. So first, let us talk about a uh, flex arm issue. If uh, the flexing happened during bottom exposure, that is quite okay. We don't want the arm flexing during printing uh, the normal layers. Because if it happened during normal layers, that means you overcook your FAP film, your FAP film and that could result in this fail print and also a loud popping noise so what I do is I reduce the support base thickness from 1 millimeter to 0 0.3 0 0.3 millimeters and then I reduce the bottom exposure to uh, only 6 seconds per layer of bottom exposure and I give four layers of bottom and I am using Isan standard resin skin so if you are using a different resin than mine you should find the best exposure for your bottom as low as possible so you don't overcook your fill And next is, this could be a problem or not, depends on how you look at it. But I want to install a screen guard. And the black tape around the screen create air pockets. 
uh, that could cause a problem during leveling and could end up in a print with a bad print lines so I just remove the whole black tape install my screen guard and then apply the Kapton tape I am using anti-glare screen guard or matte surface screen guard to avoid uh, the film sticking to the screen guard and feel free to apply screen guard or not it's up to you it is your machine but I prefer to protect my machine protect the screen and even the motherboard inside in case I have a leak resin tank and it's also faster and to clean your screen if you have a leaking resin tank just remove the screen guard apply a new one and you are done now let's talk about leveling I noticed during the first several early layer the arm is bending upward that means the zero height during printing is actually lower than the zero height on z-axis calibration which also means your build plate is pressing down harder to your screen and your film and could shorten the lifespan of your screen and your film so my solution is do a leveling during printing we are going to do a dry print with empty uh, resin tank loosen all the bolt on your plate install your plate and then print any any file will do and now we are waiting for the arm to move down several moment later okay we are waiting for the first layer exposure now we turn off the printer and we tighten all the bolt uh, 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 uh. and then we turn the printer back on Oh, just an idea. I never fully tighten my build plate. I usually remove it first and tighten the build plate later because I don't want to damage this area here. We move up the arm manually. Remove it and this is where I give all my strength to tighten the bolt. Okay. And that is all about leveling. And last, I want to talk about uh, firmware for the arm movement moving up and down after each layer on factory settings it will move up and then move down and then when it's about to reach bottom it speeds up uh, it's like you are going to ram your build plate into the screen every time the arm moving down And then I go to a Frozen Facebook group to see if there are any update for the firmware. And I found they have an update for the firmware. But the moment I update, everything, I mean every speed that I set on the slicer just don't work anymore. Before update, printing this head sculpt took like 4 hours 
after update, even if I set the speed uh, 60 millimeter or 100 or 200 millimeter per minute, nothing works. It just took six hours to print this head sculpt, no matter what speed that I set on the slicer. So now, the firmware that I am using is from Mikkel Karma. He make a custom firmware. You could see the movement of the arm. It move up, slightly speed up, move down, and when it's about to reach bottom, it slows down. To me, this is the correct movement. So thank you, Mikkel, for sharing your firmware. I will uh, give a link to the firmware in this video description. So that is all the troubleshooting that I've done to my Sonic Mini 4K. And I'm thinking to change the arm or the T-plate because I know Frozen made new stronger arm to re get rid of the flexing arm issue. And I'm also considering to maybe swap the original linear rail into high wind linear rail. I will update you guys if there's any changes after I made the new upgrade on the arm and the linear rail. So that is all for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share and thank you for watching. See ya.